Welcome back. In this video, we're going to start looking at how to use some of our UV coordinates as ways of being able to modify information within our vertex pass of our shader setup. So in our previous video, in one of our previous videos, we looked at how our UV, we could have multiple UV coordinates controlling texture information that existed separate from our main texture channel. In this particular tutorial, we're going to be looking at how we can use that same process to be able to control effects that really actually have nothing to do with textures or the way, or the way um, things are visually presented in the fragment component of our setup. So if we go into um, our unit, so here's our tree uh, that we used in a previous video. And if we jump into our Unity scene, we can see our tree in here. So if I quickly plug into one of our custom shaders that I've written for this purpose, we've now got a tree that's kind of waving in the wind. Now I've very quickly thrown together a vertex manipulation shader that allows us to have some movement in our tree. So it's important to understand how this process is working. So if we go into our vert wind shader, and we'll just bring it up, now I'm not going to go into too much detail. I'll be making some of these shaders uh, available along with this video so that you can take a look at them yourselves. But what's important here is that I've used a second UV channel to do some interesting vertex manipulation. And what we're doing is we are causing the vertexes to move through the air according to a time value that comes through our shader. So if we go into our code, Let's comment out, give me one moment, some of our code here that tells us what our height and width is. So we might leave width in for the moment. So if we comment out height, and we bring out another value. So typically, when we bring an object into our game scene, in most Unity standard shaders, they won't show you this pass here. It's called our vertex pass. And this is the where our vertexes travel through before they get passed into our surface shader. So what's important here is this allows us to intercept those vertices and do things with them before we pass them on. So for instance, if it was carrying vertex color, we could change that color. In this context, because it contains position, we can change that position every game frame. So in this setup, it's tempting to keep, to use a value called, say, height. So what we want our tree to do is we want to bend more as it goes higher up in the air. Now, as you can see here, I've really done this bending in quite a silly way, but that's just so that we can see it really clearly and visually. So I've overdone it here. Now, our temptation when setting up some of these shaders is to simply say, well, move our tree left and right as it gets higher, which means that when we put it around, we can see them waving. Now, we're going to show you where this can very quickly run into a problem. And if you use Unity with any degree of frequency, you may see have seen this problem before. So if we look at these two trees, we can see that they're set to static. And for all the world, they look like they're waving properly. But if we press play and run our scene, you can see that we're getting a very different view upon that vertex movement. And this is going to seem pretty mystifying, except there's actually a very sensible reason why this is happening. And that is because Unity is trying to make our scene run cheaper. And to do that, it is taking our two trees and it is turning them into essentially one object. It's combining them or batching them into a single object so that at runtime, instead of telling the GPU to render two separate trees, it's really telling it to render one piece of geometry that's shaped like two trees. So the problem here is that, and let me quickly jump into our scene in um, 3ds Max. The problem is, or occurs, is because when we have one object, we have our pivot point, and that is relative to our object, and that's how we know where an object is in space and where all of its vertexes are compared to that. So we will say, okay, if our object is at 0, 0, that pivot will go to 0, 0, and then all of our vertexes will be relative to that pivot point. However, if we combine these, this object with another one, we get our batched world space pivot, and that can be a new point. 
and really there's going to be very few ways to know whether that where that new point is going to arise from and the reason is because unity and i'm not entirely sure about um the workings of unreal under the hood so if people will probably be able to uh, give you more information about that but at least in unity uh, it will combine and recombine objects to try and come up with the most efficient setup so in some some situations it may combine all three or it may just combine two of them and that can that designation can change as we move along so unfortunately we're often limited in not being able to use some of our pivot space information to be able to find out well we want it to bend as it gets taller on the tree this is where our uv coordinates can come in handy so if we go to our tree here which we've vertex painted so instead of having it as just vertex painted we'll go into our uv properties so you can either unwrap your UVW and do it manually, or if you're feeling uh, like you just want to do it quickly, you could create a UV coordinate set, as you can see here, very similar to how we did with our robot, so that it will give us height. So in this setup, you can see that the UV coordinates for our tree will go from 0 to 1 from base to top. And what this piece of information can tell us is that if the UV coordinate is at zero, then the, that is the ground for the tree. And if the UV coordinate is at one, then that means that it's the tip of the tree. Um, just a heads up, it's important to remember some programs will read your UV coordinates the other way around, where the top can be zero and the bottom can be one. Uh, that's a pretty easy um, thing to solve. And uh, we'll by simply saying one minus uh, your value will give you your um, inverted UV coordinates. So if we go back into our scene here, we can see our two trees are just flailing in the most bizarre way. However, when I press pause, it does this. So now let's dig back into our shader code. So instead of saying, well, I want our height to be the height from my, the height of my vertex Z off the ground. So if we run back to our pivots here, our Z height in um, on, in 3ds max would be how high is it from that pivot however now when we run into our system here we can say well let's not use that height the height we want to use is a value where are we here we are toggle line comment so if you look in this line here, we're saying float height equals v dot text chord one dot y. So what's important about this is we're saying in our vertex program, well, I want to use the information of our texture coordinate, which is going to give us a number between zero and one, which means I have a number here between zero and one, and I want to take that height value and I want to use that height value to modify the bendiness. So if we look where we're using height, we're using height here and we're using height down here. Now we won't go into too much detail as to exactly how we're bending some of these components. It could take a little while, but you can see here that we're now defining the height of the tree by our UV coordinate. So if we save that and we go back into here, You'll see we get a slightly lower bend, and that's because our UV coordinates are clamped between 0 and 1. And now if I press play and go to the scene, you can see that we're continuing to bend the same as we were before, even though from the perspective of the program, it's now defining them to be one tree. So if we go into here and we populate, I've got a bunch of trees here, you can see that we can very quickly be able to populate out a forest that has a number of batches. So batches is the number of objects that we've managed to combine. And as a consequence, they're all kind of pseudo waving in the wind while being able to be batched into single objects. So you can see how this can become really useful as soon as you become bound by um, objects that have to combine into one. So hypothetically, if we were in our 3D program, we could take all of our trees, we could combine them into a single mesh and they could be at different heights in the world any kind of position and it will be able to tell where the base of the tree is and where the top of the tree is. If we go into our Unreal project here, we can see we have our static vertex colored tree. Now let me grab in a new shader or a new material. 
And you can see I've got a very much simpler version of that. Um, I could have replicated the same functionality as in uh, Unity, but it was just going to take a little bit longer. So if we bring up our graph for this shader, I'll show you how we're doing this. So let's go into our graph. So first of all, what we want to do is we want to input time. This is our value for how much time has elapsed in the scene. And we're running it through a sine wave. What this means is that our time will get converted into an oscillating value between 0 and 1. And that's what lets it wave left and right. So we look here, what we want to do is we want to make a float 3 where we're changing our x value. And we want that x value's result to offset the position of our vertex. So what this means is our vertexes will oscillate between 0 and 1. Now if we were to just plug directly into our resultant uh, float 3 value, you'll see that our tree now instead, the whole tree is oscillating backwards and forwards. So that's why we're multiplying in our UV coordinates. So if we go into our get our text coordinate node, whoops, excuse me, whoops, what do we call our text card? Well, you'll, so you'll have to forgive me, I'm not 100% familiar with our um, uses of Unreal. But if you bring in your text coordinate node, you'll see that underneath here we have a setting called coordinate, texture coordinate index. In this context, our texture coordinate index is going to match up with the indexes on our UV layout. So because we've used map channel, in this context, we should be using map channel two if we're using map channel one for our UV coordinate, we'll be using in our vertex program, we'll be using coordinate one. Because in this context, our indexes go from zero rather than starting at one. So in this, we break our, the text coordinate comes in as a float two. We're going to break that float two into using just our Y value, or in this case, our G value. We're going to invert it because Unreal Engine reads our UV coordinates the opposite to the way Unity does. And then we're going to multiply it by our sine wave. And you'll see that we get our tree. Whoops, save that. And you'll see that our tree is now bending left and right as it kind of shimmers in, in a hypothetical wind. So this technique can be used to really do any kind of vertex manipulation you can imagine, provided you're able to put some boundaries on it. I'll be showing some more complicated versions of this effect in some later videos to give you an idea how much further we can take this quite simple concept.